Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Playbook for Performance podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Corden. Our mission is to make work fun again by building better leaders. Now, did you know that there are three factors that really indicate the success of a change effort? Uh, these three things, if they're done poorly, the effort will fail. These three things, if they are done well, will ensure the success of a project. Any change effort. Guess what they are. Number one, leadership. Have we painted the vision? Do we understand what this change is about and why we're going about it? The second is communication. Are we giving frequent updates about the decisions that have been made, the changes, the rollout, the timeline, etc.? And the last, surprisingly, is employee resilience. If your employees are burnt out, if they're beyond their capacity, the effort will fail. But if they are resilient, if they are able to weather change well because they have a strong foundation, the change effort will succeed. And that is why we are pursuing this 20-week challenge. We are on week 16 of our 20-week challenge. We're almost uh, near the end here. And today we're going to be talking about one that is so important. It affects home, work, everything in between, and that is choosing a healthy attitude. So what do we mean when we say building resilience? We're talking about being able to withstand uh, situations, big or small, car accident, illness, um, you know, a no-show appointment, a canceled air flight, with some grace and having it not upset you too much. That's what we're really talking about. Um, and that you have a good attitude about it. And this piece, choosing a healthy attitude, is really essential. So let's get into it. So when do I suggest this lesson? Um, <laughs> I think it should be for everybody all the time. In fact, uh, just yesterday I was being kind of snarky about something and my husband goes, spiral. He made this little, you know, sound. I was like, okay, 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 right. So sometimes people are really unaware of their triggers. What is it that sets them off? What creates disappointment, anger, frustration, resentment? Um, and believe it or not, I'm going to ask you to inventory this as part of your homework, right? Because when we talk about coaching, it requires action. And if you don't take action, it's just entertainment. And Yes, we're thrilled you're watching us on YouTube or listening to this podcast in your favorite platform, but if you don't take action, it really just is entertainment. So, number one, we want you to be aware of those triggers. Now, generally, people's triggers are related to their values. If punctuality is a value, they are triggered when people um, are late and they feel like people are not respecting their time. That, that's a great example there. When people don't have a turnaround after they've been triggered, that is also a problem. So um, we're going to talk about strategies to turn this around shortly. And then if they're easily thrown off balance, things are going well, things are going pleasant, a little thing happens, a speed bump. And, you know, all of a sudden the sky is falling. If I hear those things from my clients, they say, mm, let's take a detour here. Let's talk about choosing a healthy attitude. So some key points here. Happiness is a choice. Um, I'm a big fan of Gretchen Rubin's work. She did the Happiness Project. Um, she has a podcast um talking about several podcasts talking about happiness but it really is a choice and it requires practice believe it or not now i will volunteer that i think in our society there is an expectation thanks to facebook and instagram and probably other platforms and situations that people feel they have to be happy all the time they have to be having a good time all the time and that's that's not life. We don't have um, highs and lows, um, you know, 
let me rephrase that. We don't have happiness if we don't have lows. And I'm not saying that they should be in equal portions, but we want to aim for steady with some peaks. And we want to have, you know, the, the lows be relatively minor. And not to say that there won't be major situations that um, put us in a state of grief. Those things will happen, but we can always rely on gratitude to get us out of most of these situations, at least temporarily and definitely in the long term. So we're not aiming for happiness. We're not aiming for, you know, puppy like symptoms. <laughs> we are aiming for well-being, contentment, satisfaction. Uh, those are the things that we're really aiming for. So when we look at this attitude, I'm not asking for you to be in this manic, you know, cheerleader <laughs> state. I'm asking you for me to be in this calm, pleasant, grateful, you know, things are going smoothly. So some things we want to consider, like how reactionary am I? Am I prone to mood swings? Am I prone to being easily disappointed? How quickly can I overcome a disappointment? Do I work at crafting my well-being? And what's my comfort level? Meaning where's my thermostat set? If my comfort level is, you know, 60 degrees, and I'm gonna say that's a little bit chilly, you know, uh, then I may not be as satisfied or as grateful about um, pleasant things because I'm just kind of skeptical for lack of a better term. What are the things that influence my attitude? A lack of space, a lack of time, the general environment. Those are the big ones that I hear over and over again. So let's go back to that uh, first slide here where I'm saying what are the things that people need to be aware of in terms of their triggers. This could be uh, disappointments, cancellations, could be uh, people's attitudes, the expectation that someone was going to do something that was never communicated and therefore never met, so a resentment. Um, what are these things? How often do they happen? That's the first thing we want you to inventory. The second thing is, What's your turnaround strategy? So um, I think students in the past have really had a lot of fun with this um, because everybody carries their phone with them. People basically have created their own little YouTube playlist of micro videos that they can excuse themselves to go to the bathroom, watch cats playing piano or whatever it is that cheers them up, and then return being restored to their, you know, preferred well-being state when a disappointment or something like that happens. Songs, um, little playlists or medleys of songs, because we're aiming for like a no more than five minute turnaround, right? How can you recover, get back to the party, keep having fun instead of letting this thing affect you so much? Um, so again, YouTube li playlist, song playlist, um, could be, um, reading something spiritual like a Psalm or, um, inspirational quotes, um, could be listening to a voicemail that, you know, your sweetheart has left for you or, you know, a, a friend that really cares about your well being that kind of boosts you, um, comics, you know, could be playing, words with friends or some other game that's a, just a distraction that helps you forget the thing that happened. Um, all of these things can be super helpful, but your homework is to come up with a five minute turnaround to understand how you're going to recover. Okay. So there are some great benefits that come with this awareness. Number one, you're just at peace, right? You, and you can tell yourself all kinds of stories about why people are triggering you, but that's, a, that's another lesson. That's a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Um, 
you want to be steady and stable. You don't want people to knock you off balance with little inconsiderate things they've been doing. Um, we do want you to have um, and be prepared with some a strong awareness of situations you may encounter. The holidays are a huge issue for this. So um, we're coming up on, or I guess when we air this podcast, it'll just be past Ash Wednesday. But um, Easter will be 40 days plus around the corner, which is probably the next major event that people will have family dinners about. Because I hear this a ton at Thanksgiving and Christmas for sure. Um, they know that this person will bring up these things. This person will do these things. This person will not show up at all and trigger you that way. So in general, we want to be anticipatory about the things that we might run into. Same thing with a job interview. Same thing with traffic. If we can anticipate the things that might trigger us, we can have a plan on how to overcome those things. Um, so just think about what's your inventory, who is it with, every time you're going to go into a meeting, what's their tendencies, how are they going to operate, what's going to push my button, and how am I going to write myself. Now sometimes just saying to yourself, I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> is enough to recover, okay? Sometimes you do need to excuse yourself into the bathroom, watch your cat video, come out, you know, and there's no judgment, whatever it is. Uh, for me, it was a Tiger Woods uh, Nike commercial where they were playing that song, uh, Sunshine and Lollipops, and I just thought it was the most hilarious thing with the music and the situation, and so that was that was on my little YouTube playlist. That's been a long time. But, so what are your recovery methods? Sometimes it's sharing with someone, hey, I bet you, you know, that so-and-so is going to say this or do this, etc. And that's enough. You know, then you give each other the eye, you move on, that's enough. So, um, of the lessons that we have gone through, you know, we're really in this kind of what I call level three situation for your resilience. And this is one of the lessons I think that makes the most sense to spend quite a bit of time on. You know, I double dip on this one when it comes to your investment, because if you can be prepared with those triggers and you can be prepared for your solutions, there's nothing that's going to phase you. And that's what we really want. We want to be at peace. We want to be stable. So don't forget, we've got the theme sheet at uh, our site. Um, we'll have it in the show notes. Um, and don't forget, this workshop is available for your team. Our, my new book, Me, Me in the Middle, is Overcoming and Preventing Polarization in the Workplace. Uh, it's talking about what to do to prevent it, what behaviors really prevent it, how we make sure we have diversity of thought, diversity of opinion, diversity of ideas. That's what makes us rich. And if it's already um, at the point where you separated, how to overcome that separation and get over that. And I'm there to help you out. Just uh, send a note. You can send it to podcast at seanaccordon.com or shauna at seanaccordon.com. Michelle will get me those notes. So thank you. Thanks for being here. We're so close to the end. We've just got four lessons left in the 20 week challenge. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week. Until then, take good care.